So, there are clients like Luna and Bad Lion, but they are designed for servers like Hypixel. What if someone made a server and client together which could add anything to the game they like? That's what I wanted to try out with Pixel Playoffs, my modded minigame server network. This is my second attempt at an idea like this. Originally, I was going to call it Mini Madness. Hey! Are you bored of regular Minecraft minigame servers? Then head on over to minimadness.net to try something new! But there is another game on Steam of the same name released since I started the original project. With Mini Madness, my mistake was adding lots of mods to a pack to the point it was bloated and not cohesive. Also my modding skills at the time were not as good, so starting fresh made sense. The first thing I wanted to work on was overhauling the main menu. Because I'm tight, I wanted the hosting for this to be as cheap as possible, so figured I could do away with lobby and proxy servers entirely, replacing them with a custom main menu and API. The API creates and destroys server instances running as container instances on Azure. With these I will only pay for when the containers exist, which is ideal as I don't expect much usage especially to begin with. The first challenge with this approach is preventing someone from starting hundreds of servers resulting in a massive bill. While I can set a spending cap on Azure I wanted a better solution. So I looked into how I could authenticate users with my API. I didn't want users to have to create accounts specifically for this and would much rather utilize their Microsoft, aka Minecraft account. I then considered adding something on the main menu for them to sign in with the Microsoft account that could use OAuth. However, that still requires extra steps from the user. Then I looked at how a Minecraft client logs into a Minecraft server. Both parties talk to Mojang's auth server to verify the client is who they say they are, and it is done in such a way that the server does not have access to anything they could use to hijack the player's account or session. Which was a concern for me as if players thought my mod was some sort of session stealer the project would die straight away. This is what happens when a player starts their client with my mod. Step 1. The client generates a random 20 byte array and passes it into a new big integer that gets converted to a string to get the same format used when connecting to a MC server as a server ID. Step 2. The client calls sessionserver.mojang.com forward slash session forward slash minecraft forward slash join and provides the minecraft session token, player UUID, and random bytes from step 1. If the session server returns 204, the client proceeds to call my own API passing in the player UUID, username, and random bytes from step 1. Step 3. The API then calls sessionserver.mojang.com forward slash session forward slash minecraft forward slash has joined with the player's username and server ID set to the random bytes from step 1. If the session server returns 204, my API generates a random API token, stores it in my database against the player's UUID, and returns it to the client. With that out of the way, players can finally log into my API. I then set this up to happen as soon as the game starts while the red Mojang loading screen is shown. Doing the login as early as possible is important as I will explain later on. The next step is automating the creation and destruction of Docker container instances. My API is written in C-Shop ASP.NET, so I wanted to use one of the many NuGet packages Azure offers to interact with their platform, but I was unable to get this to work. I eventually settled for using their command line tool and having my API run these commands instead. I also used dependency injection in my API so I could easily swap out my provider for hosting Docker containers in the future, as although Azure was the easiest to do this with fitting my requirements for exposing a TCP port on a public TCP4 IP, and only paying for the time the container is running without needing to learn Kubernetes. It's not perfect with the biggest issue being how long it takes for a container to start. Even though I am hosting the container image in the same region on Azure, it takes around 90 seconds from running the command to starting the container to being able to join the server. This is why I want the player to log into my API as soon as possible so that a server can be started while they are still loading the game. Additionally, I implemented an extra capacity mechanic so for every six players logged into the API, one server will be running that is not assigned to a minigame. When that server is assigned to a minigame, a new server will be started to fulfill the extra capacity requirement. That way by the time a player has finished with a minigame there should be another server ready to go for their next. 
This leads on to how players join the servers. For this, when the player clicks a button on the main menu to play a minigame, it sends a request to the API saying they want to play that minigame. The API will then check if there are any servers running with that minigame assigned to them where the minigame hasn't started yet. If not it will look for a server that has no minigame assigned to it. If it finds one it will assign the minigame to that server. If the API finds a server it will return the ID of that server, else it will return null and the client will continue to send the request to the server until it gets a server ID. When the client does get an ID, it will send a request to another endpoint to get the IP of this server. The API will only return the IP when the server is ready to accept players. The client will continue to use this endpoint until it gets an IP. The minigame server is also polling the API to say which players have joined and listened to which minigame and map it should use. What's nice about this approach is while the first player is waiting for a server to join, other players can also be doing the same in parallel. So even before the server is ready to accept players, a list of players who will join that server is being constructed on the API. However, waiting for the server to be ready and for enough players to be there for the game to fill could take a bit. So I wanted to take advantage of the modded client so the player has something to do during this time. I remembered hearing about a patent for auxiliary games and discovered this has expired. This patent was for users to play a game while waiting for their main game to load. I could overlay a simple 2D game on the player's screen that could be shown from when they click a button on the main menu all the way up to when the minigame starts. I found I could extend the same class the red Mojang loading screen uses to cover everything up while loading. Getting keyboard inputs was a little more tricky, as unlike a normal screen in a Minecraft menu it did not have this functionality built in. But I was able to use some mix and magic to work around this. For now the so-called game is just a blank screen that shows which arrow keys you are pressing, but that's fine for now. I think that's enough about the API. In the next devlog I will cover the first minigame, a very basic 1v1 PvP arena that uses zero mods because I lack creativity. But maybe after that I'll actually find a way to mod in something unique that other servers can't offer. But if you have any ideas please comment them below. Goodbye.